Hello guys, this is Zayam and welcome to the channel. We have seen a series of tag questions in the last few weeks. And this is gonna be the last of the series and this for now because from the next week we'll be introduced to a new data structure and we'll be solving more interesting questions related to that data structures from the next week. Make sure you stay tuned. For this week's question, we're gonna look at a question how to reverse a stack. We'll be reversing a stack using its, its own uh, operations like push, pop and maybe peak but uh, majorly push and pop. We'll be using recursion, but we'll be using recursion two times. So sometimes it is also called double recursion. Sounds, sounds tricky, but the code is not. Let's dive into it and let's check how to, how to reverse the stack using double recursion. Let's get started. A stack has two operations, that is push and a pop. To reverse a stack, we should therefore use only these two operations. Right now, I'm using a Python as a medium to uh, solve this problem. In Python, we have in Python we have lists. Lists can also be used as stacks. The documentation for that you can find in here. How uh, lists can be used as stacks. So here you can see that stack is the variable name and dot append is similar to push and dot pop is yeah it is the same as pop in stack so we will be using this list in python to implement our stack uh, let's think about the problem statement how do we reverse a stack and that too by using a recursion we know that stack uses lifo uh, mechanism that is the element that goes in first is the last element that is popped so the top most element that is the first element that is popped from stack is always the element that is pushed last. So we need to have some uh, function that inserts the popped element that is the topmost element in the bottom. So let's begin with that function itself. So let's write the function which inserts for now some arbitrary element at the bottom of the stack. Before we implement our function, we need to have our variables set, right? So let's have one stack input variable and let's initialize with a few integers and let's also have another stack variable called a stack output and we will insert the elements that is actual, the actual output after reversing the elements in stack input. Now let's implement the function insert at bottom. Insert at bottom takes two parameters. One is stack itself and also an element that should be inserted at the bottom. So let's see. This is an recursion function. So a recursion function should always have a base condition. If, L, if not, the recursion function will go into infinity loop and that we do not want. Be, let's uh, have a brace condition. Let's check the length of the stack that if it is empty, then if it is empty, then that is the place where we actually want the parameter x to be inserted into the stack. So actually let's take the opportunity to in, uh, insert in, into the stack. And, uh, and let's return from the function. But what if the stack is not empty? Then we just have to pop the remaining elements from the stack and wait until the stack is empty. So we have to pop. So let's uh, as assign the popped element into a temporary variable and call insert at bottom and pass in these parameters. So any statement after this will only only execute if this condition is met. So after this condition is met, what do we want? We want this temporary variable that we have assigned to insert back into the stack. So let's write that. Yes. So and that's it. Uh, that is all we need to write. 
to insert an element at the bottom of the stack. So right now we have implemented one recursion in double recursion problem. So what is another recursion? Another recursion is actual reversing of the stack. That is the elements that are popped from the stack. So we have to implement that. We will call it as reverse and take in the stack as the parameter. Then as this also is a recursive function, we need to have a base condition. So let's check with the emptiness of the stack. So if stack is empty, we'll just return. We do not, we need not do anything if the stack is empty. So if, if not, if the stack is not empty, what we need to do, we just need to have a temporary variable to take the popped element and we need to reverse. We need to call the reverse function again with the stack as a variable. Th that is if one is top of the variable uh, top of the stack and two is second and so on so one will be popped first and two will be popped second and third and so on the first popped element we need to insert at the bottom and uh, two at bottom of that and three bottom of that and four bottom of that and etc so here we have called st reverse stack so at the end of the re this recursion in our example 4 will be the end of the recursion so that for that we need to ha have the function insert at bottom so we will have to send these two as the parameters to it so once 4 is inserted at the bottom the reverse function will be completed and will go back and uh, then the temporary variable will be 3 the, then 3 should be inserted at the bottom so 4 as 4 is the, uh, the the only element in the stack then 3 will be inserted at the bottom of the stack and then 2 and then 1 and so on and finally the stack will be reversed so after the stack is reversed we just need to return the stack back that's all we need to write to reverse a stack using double recursion right now let's test our functions use assert uh, in python to compare reverse of stack input if that is not in equal to stack output then an exception will be raised so let's run the program and see if the reverse operation is right or wrong so uh, a session error has been raised that means these two are equal so we have come a halfway through so let's print out this reverse of the stack input and see if these if the stack is actually is equal to the stack output so we will run it and see that stack input that is right now 4321 is equal to stack output as expected that's all for today guys in this video we have seen how to reverse a stack using double recursion in the next video i will be back with new data structure and new interesting questions. Here we go.